You are listening to the MVP Podcast. Well, welcome everyone to another episode of Talking Tech. My name is Danny. And during these episodes, we are going to be discussing indie tech and how to apply it. Uh, these episodes will always have a video recording. So guys, go ahead and check it out, right? And uh, uh, where our guest is going to demonstrate a portion of the solution that we, or that they uh, represent. And um, I- I'm not gonna lie, I-, I just got to know this person and uh, he's hilarious. But <laughs> today we have someone who, uh currently works at the uh unico group but is also starting his own indie tech company hey guys as you know we're bringing a lot of people on these uh sessions who you know we're an agent and we're in the industry and starting their own tech but uh which was what we're going to be talking about today and i'm honored and am to have on uh chris here chris how's it going man Good man, happy to be here with you, Danny. Excited to yeah, wrap on some some insurance stuff. Should be fun. Yeah, dude, it's gonna be awesome. Uh, the last time we chatted, which man, it was about a month ago now, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. we talked a little bit about the College World Series because you're right in uh, right near there, right? Smack dab. My wife and I actually we got she was having some fun this year because we got some stumbled into some tickets that ended up being right behind home plate uh oh, wow. and she's from from toronto so she's like you know she her, she was telling her family to you know jump on espn and check us out so like every pitch we were sitting back there waving you know it was fun we had some fun with it wait that's sick uh i'm jealous because um i guys i played a little bit of college ball back in the day and i've always wanted to go to the college world series actually like play in it but uh, but definitely would love to go. Is it like how's the atmosphere? Is it sick? Yeah, man. It's it, like the the whole kind of park downtown area, just you know, wall to wall people, drinks, restaurants, games are fun and usually insanely hot. You know, so like <laughs> you know, if you're like me, bring a bring an extra t shirt or three that you can change <laughs> into at the like seventh inning stretch. You know, before you go home and get back in the car, and your wife's like, you stink, but <laughs> uh, yeah man yeah come down we're happy to host you let me know when you when you come to town and and we'll make sure you get set up i'll take you up on that um yeah, <laughs> but all right uh chris so um before this we had chatted about a couple of topics um uh to discuss on today's uh, uh session but uh yeah just we typically go ask the listeners like hey why should they listen today so um yeah give us those three uh points that you wanted to chat on yeah i think I'm interested in just chatting and and honestly, even hearing your perspective a little bit too on just who, what, where is driving change? Like we were talking about a little bit, yeah, um, jumping on the call, just where we're, you you know, brokers are having success, right? With technology and where they're not. Yeah. Um, Yeah. And then I'd say interested too, just in the, uh, some of the news that's come out here recently um, with respect to some of the, what I would call bigger data plays, yeah, um, in the space, AXA and AWS um, being one of them that I think is um, pretty interesting. I think there's some buzz out there right now too around Salesforce and um, Informatica that I think uh, has some interesting implications for the industry. So uh, yeah, I think those are probably yeah those are probably like the at least the you know kind of higher levels that I I think would be interesting for people to hear about. Yeah, I love it. No, when you uh, like I said before this, when you had brought up the the second point there with uh, AWS and Salesforce and Formica, um, I'll be honest, I am like clueless. I have no idea. So I'm like curious as I kind of hear your take, and then that kind of pieces the puzzle in my brain. Like, yeah. oh wow, that makes sense yeah, for sure. Yeah, uh, what a lot to begin. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, all right, man, let's get into it. So, uh, I, we're going to briefly go into your background. Yes. Um, and I do want to run through that real quick because again, the, what I've been seeing a lot in this industry is, uh, a lot of people who have experience in insurance, a lot of them have been going into the technology side, right? And a lot, because there is a lot of opportunity, but let's be honest, you probably got into this because, 
of what's available for you today. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's uh, yeah, man. Honestly, it's it was probably less about o- opportunity and more about necessity. Mm-hmm. Uh, for me, uh, I have been working as a large commercial property casualty producer for uh, just at ten years here in twenty four, which is crazy to think about. But uh, you know, just out working with my clients on a day to day basis, as well as my service team, as well as with underwriters just kind of triangulating across those three different, you know, groups. And I find like, it is a super, super clunky process. And clients would often say, man, like we, we really appreciate you as a person, Chris, but we, we really dislike insurance (laughs) and the the process of purchasing insurance. Um, So you kind of go home feeling a little deflated, right? (laughs) I'm busting my butts for these guys. and, And they're just not like ultimately, you know, happy with, with the, the process. So it was really more out of necessity of like, man, yeah, there's what ex- solutions out there actually address the concerns I'm hearing. So you go out and look in the marketplace, see if there's anything that really, you know, addresses it and then yeah. uh, identify that there's really not. And so then you kind of <laughs> faced with that question of like, well, should we do something about it or not? You know? And I think we just landed in the, you know, the box of like, hey, let's let's see if we can create some solutioning here that actually does help um, the overall customer experience. So that was kind of my foray into the technology space. And I was just fortunate enough to to, to connect with a, uh, you know, a technical co-founder who could like help bring my insurance nerd dreams to life. Uh, yeah. Technically. So. <laughs> no, that's great. And we'll, we're actually going to go more into that because like, this helps drive change in the industry. Um, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that, but more on Faro, right? Like, dude, tell us a little bit more about it. Yeah, man. So we are we just consider ourselves the commercial insured's home to live, um, digital home to live. So, you know, uh, we want them to be able to handle anything insurance related from our environment and whether that's uh, solutioning that we've tooled for uh, ourselves or if that's through partners, right? Um, so we, we kind of look at ourselves as a, you know, trying to bring the insure tech solutions actually to the forefront. And so, you know, whether that's a certificate management or payment solutions or whatever, like we don't need to go out and create those and tool for them ourselves. They've already been done and done really well. Um, yeah. We just want to bring those to to the insured um, in addition to some of the solutioning that we've done. So our solutioning has really been around uh, the renewal process in the middle mm-hmm. of market space and how to really get data up from the insured into the distribution channel. So up to the brokerage and on up to the insurance company in a digital, repeatable, structured, um, efficient sort of way, right? And so right. it's that's the things around uh, statements of value, like Excel documents that are super clunky. And that's things around, uh, you know, PDFs and Word documents and apps and financials and just the flow. And so um, so what we're, we've done is really kind of leaned into the insured first and said, okay, how do we make this feel really fluid for you? And then mm-hmm. kind of backed our way into the brokerage from there um, to create uh, efficiency for the, you know, for the desk and and the team and the brokerage side of you. So, yeah, that's that's our story, and um, yeah, having a lot of fun doing it. And and you know, like what we're identifying is there's as we get further into it is there's just a lot of like as you said, there is a lot of opportunity to solve problems, right? There's yeah. like, in, like too much at times, right? Staying focused <laughs> is a challenge. So, <laughs> yeah. Man, um, I can go down a rabbit hole, but, uh, you know, truly have found being in this industry for five years now, agents just don't want to use other tech than their management system. Now they've been, you know, inching more outside to a CRM. I think that's been more widely adopted, you know, voice over IP. Mm-hmm. Um, but like, tell me a little bit about your experience so far with talking to these agencies, um, with being more open to using an internal tool like Feral, because in, in all reality, you're, you're probably getting agents saying like, Hey, Chris, uh, you know, how's, you know, how do I work in my main business? Like all that, yeah. like, like, what are your thoughts around that? Yeah, I think. 
I think that, you know, that's the kind of the question I call like on who's driving change and, and yeah. defining success. Like the, it, it's super interesting to me to sort of step back and look and say, okay, like is, is change being driven by the brokers themselves, right? Is it from the insurance companies? Is it from insureds? Is it from insure tech nerds who think they have cool solutions and they're like trying to push it, you know, on the industry? And yeah. I think like, as I've been in this now for, you know, a couple, two plus years, like, um, I think it really is driven by the brokerage. Um, and mm -hmm. I, what I might, what I'm seeing is every brokerage is unique in that they have a different priority set. So, yeah. so while you like, while you kind of want to say, okay, well, everybody's very focused on the customer experience and say, Hey, that might be like universally true to a degree. Yeah. Every broker comes at that from a very unique angle, right? Like their mm -hmm. own unique position. So some might really focus on insured related tools, resources like a Pharaoh, which is great. We love those kind of brokers, right? But, yeah. <laughs> you know, but they're, but you can't, you can't force them either. And then there's others that are like, listen, um, like we're very focused on creating a better customer experience, but for us to do that, we're going to focus all on agency tools, right? Like we're all yep. going to focus on, um, you know, internal resources that are going to help our teams get better, more efficient. And so then when our service teams are turning around and like working with the insured, uh, it does give a better experience. So it's, it's, it's kind of interesting to see, um, yeah, just where where each individual broker is at on their journey, uh, yeah. which is like, you know, the interesting word of 2024, <laughs> but, but they are like, they all are on this different starting point. And so it's, it's being flexible enough in tech, I think, to mm -hmm. sort of meet them where they're at and or like from a sales cycle perspective, um, you know, just sort of figure out like, yeah, what is that like thing behind the thing that's really making you tick? Because it might be right. Hey, we we like are super focused on the internal resources, but it might be because they actually think that's going to be the thing that leads to better customer success. Right. Yeah. It's um, a good so point. It's an dynamic. It is. It's so, you know, and I, again, I have such a different perspective because I've only been on the tech side uh, and I have never been an agent. So, and I, I think that's important to note. Like I understand I have not been in the weeds, uh, but I have worked with literally hundreds of agencies at the, yeah. this point, scratch, medium, and, you know, top 100s. Yeah. Um, yeah. And here's the what I see. I think it's a trust. I think it a, a lot of it comes down a, a lot of it to applied in Vertifor and you know your Hawksofts out there who have dictated the um technology and majority of the market. If I didn't say your name, I'm sorry. Like now, sir. It's I I you guys yeah. are out there, I understand you're making a huge impact. Um, but like they're so used to comfortable brands like that. Um, and have gotten so wrapped up in an internal workflow that they're not willing to be open to change. Um, and I get it. Change is scary, right? Um, you know, I'll give a quick example. I used to work at a company called PCM. It was a value-added reseller. We use a system called SX, Chris, and it was a system from the 80s kid you not. And I like, I'm a kid out of college and this is in 2016. <laughs> okay. So it's not far along ago. Yeah, yeah. And I am, this system looked like, I, like it was an in, super Nintendo that was like not even fully developed yet. <laughs> and I'm like, mainly, I'm like, what is going on? This is a billion dollar company and we're using this shit. And we, uh, two years later, switch over to a solution called SAP, which SAP is huge nowadays. A lot of industries use it. Yeah. yeah oh yeah. Uh, um, and like, it was a no brainer. It was slick yeah. and all that, but we had someone else on our team who it, it, he was fighting it every day. It was a problem every single day. He hated the tool. But if you think of it, he was in his, he was 40, uh, he's 49, 50. He doesn't want change. 
Yeah. Right. He doesn't want to change his flow. He comes in, he gets his job done and then he leaves. Right. And so I think we battle a lot of that today of these, uh, you know, leaders at these companies that are like, well, we don't want to rock the boat too much. Um, and also aren't trusting of the new technology out there today, because if we think about it, I guess we are still kind of new, right? Like yeah. Yeah. there's a lot we still needed to develop. But there's still, there's a lot of value I know Pharaoh can bring. <laughs> yeah, but you know what I'm, dude, in your, to your comment, it's, it's pretty dead on. I think it's a trust thing. Like what I've, you know, I was just saying this the other day uh, mm -hmm. to my partner, but like this has always been a very relational driven industry. Yeah. Where we're finding success with customers is those that have taken the time to invest relationally with us to grow mm -hmm. that trust factor, right? Because yeah, and, and in fact, it was another conversation to tie that even more together here recently uh, with a gentleman. And he said, uh, you know, at the end of the day, like the technology is no longer the issue. It used to be that we couldn't figure out the technology. Now anybody can do the technology, right? It's that's, right. It has nothing to do with being able to create tech you know, technological solutions mm -hmm. has everything to do with deployment, right? And use and and relationship and trust, like being able to bring all those things together and say, hey, what can we do for you? Which I think the challenge there is that tends to lead to a lot of like customization, right? Or like, yeah, desire, good point. like well, can you guys tweak this? And it's like, well, I have the relationship, but I know probably InsureTech XYZ out there could probably do that too. And so you're kind of like trying to decide, do I, re you know, refer you out or do we handle it ourselves or like, where do we fit in the, you know, the matrix there? So that's also sort of an interesting dynamic as well. Yeah, that's good stuff. Well, let's, uh, let's kind of push into the, our other yeah. topic here, because I like to keep these uh, pretty right to the point, right? Yeah. yeah. And we can chat about this all day, but um, the big data plays. Okay, so I'm curious because I actually have no idea. <laughs> uh, what what do you what were what were your uh, thoughts around that? I have no idea either. Um, <laughs> um, you know what, man? I'll, I'll tell you what. Like, it's interesting to me because, it, and I'm biased, like admittedly biased, right? Like, yeah. Very, I'm a I'm a broker by trade. I'm very interested in the customer experience. The question yeah. I you know kind of continue to ask myself with with some of the the big data stuff out there is actually like who does that end up serving, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and I think at times my like my my question often leads me to this answer, and I don't know that it's the right answer. There's smarter people out there than me to to answer yeah. this answer, but is that it really serves insurance companies the most because what they're trying to get to is good accurate data right right um and our you know sort of our concern is with that is hey if you're if you're kind of like getting all of this data from anybody but the actual person whose data it is the insured hmm kind of an interesting dynamic in other words you're you're not inviting the one person to the party um that, that it should matter to <laughs> that it should matter to right so we i just think there's interesting implications with that as as the industry progresses around data privacy issues and yeah. um because a lot of times like underwriters right they're they're getting all this third party data in to supplement right. whatever they did get from the broker right yep. um mm -hmm. and and then that information never actually makes it back down to the insured uh, so that they can become informed better risks, right? Um, yeah. Which theoretically should be everybody's interest in the brokerage and, and company side of the business, right? Like our interest should be like, how do we help our customers become better risks over time? Right. Um, so yeah, interesting there too. I, I, I'm curious to see, I, I think the, the Salesforce deal that one's super interesting to me because it, it sort of feels like if that if that were to get done that um, they're trying to kind of stand toe to toe with Applied um, and Ivan side of the world. So I think there's yeah. some interesting, interesting implications there too in terms of the competitive landscape and a little and bit you, more pressure. When you think of the data, you think of like Salesforce 
And can you kind of comment a little bit more? Cause I, I don't know. I guess, let me think out loud here. So yeah. uh, Salesforce deal would be with uh, uh, some uh, carriers out there. And then they, the idea would be to building some direct pipelines. Is that the thought? Yeah, so I think I think to a degree, yeah, I think it, okay. it just changes where today a lot of the that kind of data um, really is is very much sort of in the applied world, the Ivan's world. Right. Um, I think it starts to present sort of alternatives there, um, mm -hmm. where yeah, where the money starts flowing and and you know into somebody else's pocket. And so I think, I think that's probably uh, an interesting play from Salesforce, just because a lot of the brokerages are starting to think about creating their own agency management systems on the Salesforce yep. financial cloud. Now yep. Salesforce is going to be able to start supplementing some of the data. Um, yep. So I think that's probably where it becomes interesting is, is, you know, Salesforce really like, moves to more of a 21st century agency management system theoretically uh, yeah so yeah it does present an opportunity because you know, it's crazy no one has tried to rival ivan's <laughs> they're just like they've been there for so long <laughs> it's crazy that no one's tried to replicate something identical i i can say this now and um you know, this will be out by the time this episode drops, they'll have already be out there because I'm over at Glovebox now. Um, and, you know, what Ryan and uh, Sean um, and Adam have been doing over there yeah. is, is literally building direct pipelines to carriers. And the first one comes out with Acuity, next one with okay. Nationwide. Um, and it's, it, you know, it, it's like solving a problem. And, you know, I think it's great. You get Salesforce in too, like, Let's start to challenge where, like, how good of data that we get. Yep. Because what's the problem with Ivan's? Well, Ivan's is the top dog. And, um, and listen, I never like to say anything negative, but here's kind of the reality is carriers are frustrated with how much they charge for like downloading documents. <laughs> I think there's only like five carriers out there. Or, unless there's more that actually are like two way and they actually do like docs. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's that's a very short list. Yes. And and it's crazy. And and listen, we can go down the rabbit hole of like, hey, carriers don't they don't have the API, like they don't have anything built. They don't want to build it. Like it, there's this whole thing. I get it. But there needs to be someone who builds this connectivity because we like the fact that you know, if I'm insured with Allstate and I have technology that is built around my product that I'm selling and I can go on the Allstate app and I can get whatever I want done as an insured. Yep. Like that needs to be the experience that we provide in the independent agent channel. Or like, listen, I mean, if I'm a younger, I'm younger generation coming through, I don't know crap about insurance. Yep. And you're telling me I have to Call, I'm not going to lie. Like, this is how people probably think. Have to call to get something done. No, people want to be able to issue it themselves and it'd be quick and easy. Yep. If you don't, if you can't support it, like, you're going to lose on business. It's just kind of the reality. I don't know. What do you, what do you think on that? Yeah. I mean, I think for sure the, the, the connectivity, like, no ifs, ands, or buts. And, right. Um, I think, I think the, the thing that continues to get proven over and over again, which is the beautiful thing that you guys are doing over at Glovebox and, and, and others are, are, you know, I think really um, adhering to is the broker still has a place, right? It's just right. how do we augment that, right? Like how do yeah. we really support? So to your point, I think you used an analogy earlier uh, about a dent the dental industry, right? Like how do we, <laughs> like, how do we, you know, really like, uh, automate some things there and and at the end of the end get fewer phone calls incoming right and i think right. that's really the name of the game is how do we use technology to augment the broker so i can do more with less uh, but yeah. uh, still be there so when i have that customer who does need to talk to me right and they need to pick up the phone and you know just have that conversation for peace of mind or whatever it is right we're here but 
but as as people and the younger generation start to age up, right? Like, how do they uh, want to transact ninety percent of their business? It's online. It's digital, right? It's it's um, that direct connectivity. So I think that that continues to be an interesting dynamic in the insure tech space. Is yeah. how do we how do we bring those two things together, right? The workflow human element right. for for the brokerage and and continue to promote that while also yeah eliminating a lot of uh unnecessary work there I'm, that, that i mean to to your point just so you know and like what you're doing i i was over at wonder right um it was a tool that helped with um some uh, uh of the same yeah. uh, thing here but you know and the the, the idea <laughs> Of you know, at, you're talking with other agencies that they're still handwriting all this in. Like what you're doing is literally making it to where they can reuse data. Like it's it's so simple, but like your product has so much value, <laughs> and they and they're still willing to handwrite everything in because they don't want to. It's just crazy to me. Like it's whack. I know you're laughing because you're like, <laughs> you hear it probably all the uh, time, right? Dude, I, it, no, I'm laughing because like, what do they say? If you can't cry, laugh. And I, or maybe it's the <laughs> other way around. I can't remember, but it's kind of that <laughs> dynamic, man. It's like, it is, it's sort of, um, it's like what they'll, what, you know, the, 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 the choice is right. And it's the choice to kind of fall back into sort of the, you know, this is the way we've always done it. Uh, yeah, it's an interesting one. And then, and then just speaking about data on the brokerage side, like we talk mm. company, like industry wide, but data on the brokerage side, that's sort of like a new thing for a lot of brokers to think about. Like yeah, that's a good point. Big, like yeah. broad aggregated data. That's a very mm. interesting thing for them to think about in relation to their, you know, into their, to their insurers. But I think it can actually help brokers drive business because if they identify, hey, like our sweet spot is we can write this type of business or this industry segment with this carrier and it's super profitable. And if we could just replicate that 100, 200, 300 times over, like, you know, but they, yeah. sometimes they can't even get to that level of information. So that's money, man. I had a session with Kiara Walden over at Hub. She was great. And she literally, she walked, she talked about that. She's like, hey, the market's tough today. Yeah. Okay. Well, it opens up an opportunity for you to maybe like find a niche. Yeah. Maybe pick five of them, focus on them, right? Build yeah. some data up and then weed the others out. Yeah. Figure out what it is. Um, yeah. and yeah, that's I'm that's fantastic that you bring that up. But uh well, dude, let's um uh, dude, I want to see Farrell, man. Like, yeah. could you run us through it? Yeah, super quick. Well, We'll uh we'll make it we'll make it nice and nice and tight here. <laughs> no, I um, love this part. Uh, this is the part where I uh, geek out because I'm 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 in this because of technology. <laughs> yeah, man, totally. Can you see? Did I get it shared? Okay. Yeah, you're good. You're good. Thanks for asking. I've yep. too many other so, times I shared the wrong screen. <laughs> oh man, I'm telling you, no kidding. Uh, so yeah, man, the just like a CRM or an agency management system. You know, uh -huh. and you'll see your list of accounts at the brokerage level. Uh, if you're a desk or a producer, and you you know, can drill down. In this case, we're we're drilling into to zero project. Um, and then, yeah, once you're here, this is largely um, largely the environment, man. It's, uh -huh. it's a collaborative view for the broker, collaborative view for the insured. Okay, so um, everybody's working from kind of the same. Uh, access point if you will from the same data points uh -huh. super high level um can handle anything from renewal to to policy admin to risk management um and and mm. many 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 more uh solutions within the platform here um yeah. but but i think where we get a lot of at least initial traction is on just this renewal dashboard in terms of how do we get an insured uh, on the renewal uh, process initiated, right? And, yeah. And then really just walk them through it. So it sort of becomes this roadmap, uh, wow. shared roadmap, if you will, um, for both the both the broker and the insured to, to, to just kind of track that process. And so we've got brokerages who are using this on new business. We've got brokerages who are using it on renewal. We've got brokerages using it on both. Uh-huh. Um, 
And then as, as they uh, and their customers get in and get further entrenched in the platform, um, you know, really have the ability to like, uh, you know, think of, hey, what are other solutions that, you know, that our, our customers want to use? And so for us, the, the connectivity that you guys do, we mm -hmm. love because we've never envisioned actually connecting all the way on up to an insurance company Right. Um, in the same in the same way that you guys do, where uh, where we sort of fit is, uh, hey, how do we get it from the insured up uh -huh. to the broker? Um, right. Really in that middle large commercial space, um, and then and then remain like agnostic, like we don't care which carrier it ends up going to or 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 not. We really yeah. just want to get that information digitized at the source. Um, so it can, so, I mean, there's a future where, um, I think we, you know, there's partnership opportunities, even for us with a glove box, uh, yeah. as, as you guys continue to, to build solutioning, um, with the insurance company side of things in the, you know, more small commercial space, like how could we actually, you know, have you pull us into small commercial and us pull you guys into large commercial and, and work on that. So I think that's like the. I steal it. Actually, I steal this from Elliot. Um, <laughs> but this is that's the abundance mindset, right? Like, there's a yeah. lot of huge, big, hairy problems to solve in insurance, and like we all gotta like, especially on the insure tech side, figure out how to work together and like support each other in the process. So, yeah, no, dude, thanks for sharing that. Yeah. And what really stood out to me is like, if I if I don't know insurance. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, and I'm large commercial, the, like you got to walk, you know, you got to walk people through it and you made it there to where it was so easy to just navigate. I mean, I love that little pipeline view that you have, like Thank you. for me that like literally needs handheld all the time. Uh, that, would, with yeah. <laughs> that, that would be perfect for me. I'm like, uh, what stage is this in? Um hundred percent, man. Yeah. That's and then my I, wife. She says all the time, like, hey, dude, like, you know, you can lead a horse to water, right? And I'm like, I know, babe. I, I'm trying here. I'm doing my best. But yeah. And then I, I also saw in there like the I'm assuming the collaboration from like a scheduled management being able to go in there. Yeah. I mean that. I just, you know, now that I'm in this more and more, I can only imagine, like, again, I'm going to bring up that company I was at before, uh, PCM. Yeah. Like, I can only imagine the amount of vehicles that they had to insure, the amount of drivers. Yeah. I mean, hundreds. And then from there, you have to get, you have to manage that. <laughs> and you have to ask someone at this company to pass that information along to you and update it for you guys to be able to do your business efficiently. At least when I say you guys, the agency, um, yeah. and like, you know, and, and I think like we get as a larger broker, we have a process and we get kind of set in our ways. But when I see something like this, you know, and I'm coming up through, you know, I'm younger, like this would be no brainer. Yeah. <laughs> like, Well, dude, it, cause at the end of the day, and it just fascinates me that, yeah. That, this concept I've been teasing out here recently, and I, and then we can wrap up, I'm sure, but it's just the 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 ceiling mm -hmm. of technology that insures experience mm -hmm. is the ceiling that's set by the brokerage. It's not the yeah. ceiling set by technology, right? Right. It's an interesting, like, sort of thing to to wrap your head around because, to your point, like. Hey, the broker just happy setting the ceiling at here's a uh, schedule workbook for your auto and equipment and property, right? And and it's all based in an Excel. Like here you go. And then the insured's experience with that is like, hey, this is very clunky. It's very time consuming. It's not accurate. I spend 10, 15, 20 hours, a big company like that, probably close to 30, just updating their schedule yeah. to into insurance. Whereas you could implement a resource, right? That yep. um, that cuts through all of that and makes that part of the process of, uh, you know, a five minute, like, no, dude, we've kept this up to date all year. We're good to go, <laughs> you know, sort of thing. So, um, so yeah, it's it certainly um, some of the stuff and I'll talk to like true technologists, like not in the insurance industry. And they're yeah. like, wait a minute, all you guys do is 
um, like, you know, some like process management workflow, like in a little, you know, technology around that. I'm like, yeah, they're like, that's, that's unbelievable. You know, like they expect <laughs> it to be like way more complicated, you know, like, like AI, like machine yeah. learning stacking yeah. on top of each other. Yeah, no, that's not it. <laughs> they, they expect all the buzzwords and I'm like, no, nah, we're keeping it pretty basic over here. Yeah. <laughs> pretty basic. Presents an opportunity though. AI come in, man. I mean, uh, do it I, no. <laughs> Well, you can't get through a podcast without at least saying AI. And I'm right. Like, I'm glad you mentioned both because now we've got it in there. You know, we do all <laughs> those. By the way, they're Just, they're the buzzwords. We do we do all of that. We have yeah. the buzzwords cat. You know, captured over here. So yeah, we're AI. We got everything in here to Pharaoh. That's what it is. No. <laughs> well, dude. Hey, um, the way that I like to close this out um is you know you're in the tech space you know you chatted with a bunch of other you know insure tech vendors uh you know two or three that you feel like other agency agencies should uh take a look at if you, you can't think of two or three don't you can give us yeah. one yeah no i i really like um I really like where Ascend is headed. I think there's big things ahead for those. Man, they've those been brought guys. up three times on this podcast. Shout out yeah. Ascend. Man, billing, they're smart guys. Listen, billing and insurance is like, you know, <laughs> it, stone tablet, like horse and buggy, <laughs> sort of like it's really old school. So yeah. uh, love what they're doing there to to try and bring some some automation to the space. Uh, and I would say I, I do like... Um, any of the uh, uh, kind of certificate management resources oh, yeah. um, that are out there. So I would, I would certainly throw Certificial um, on a Certificate short. Heroes, good one. Yeah, yep. Yep. you got it. Love love what they're doing for the space to just bring, you know, solve some, what I would say, like just some really low-lying, not to diminish them. I mean, but it's just low-lying fruit in the sense that it's a, it's a super clunky problem. I'm glad. It's a huge problem. It. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, you nailed it. Yeah. And then yeah, man, I mean, there's so many like really, really cool solutions out there. One that I think's super uh, you know, again, just like a low lying sort of glad someone is crushing this is uh loss run pros. Um, yeah, love what they're doing over there for sure too. Yeah, every dude, it's coming, man. It's getting better every single year. Yeah. Right. No, um, no. Thank you, thank you for showing throwing those out. Yeah, man, ascend. Look at you guys on the session three times now. Well, if I would have known, I would have given you some diversity. Next time <laughs> no. I'll, I'll hey, when out. when you're good, you're good, right? I mean, you should you deserve a <laughs> yeah. shout out. Uh, <laughs> well, Chris, you're the man. Seriously. Um, Likewise. Thanks for having me. Yeah, and I truly do appreciate you coming on here, uh, discussing your journey running us through Pharaoh briefly here and, and why it provides value to some really large commercial agencies and the problem that's out there and your just viewpoint on the space. I think it's so valuable, like from where you've been at and to what you're doing today. You know, we, we need people, leaders like that to keep pushing because eventually we're going to get to the point five years from now, we're not chatting about like, hey, are we using tech? Are we, no, we're actually utilizing it and it's actually driving true value across all channels. And so, no, I, I truly do appreciate what you're doing. Cool, man. Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> awesome. Well, guys, at the end of the day, we discuss Indie Tech and how it'll help your agency. So thanks for listening and catch you on next episode. Peace.